This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty. Online at madeformoreliving.com. Are you stressed out and just frustrated and wondering why, why, why are my offers not getting accepted? I'm a cash buyer. I should be able to get 50% off on a home. <laughs> Man, have yeah, you right. seen, have you ever seen the, seen those commercials or those those ads about people talking about hey here's here I should be able to get so much off on a home because it's just a cash offer have right you seen that? you're supposed to get a huge discount because it's a cash offer but that doesn't mean you're always going to be successful at getting a great deal is that what you're saying well I'm saying cash off like the the loans these days are so. So, like you're able to close them so quickly. Oh right. Normally cash. Was so beneficial. they're almost similar to cash. Is it's what you're basically saying. the same as oh, cash. Okay, gotcha. So there's really no benefit to the cash offer unless you waive all contingencies and you waive like you're not you don't care about the condition of the home. You don't care about what it's going to appraise for. You just are going to sight unseen buy it cash. So you have someone they've got great they've got a great financial setup to buy a home. They've been a pre-approved, everything is in line and in order, or they are an all cash buy cash buyer from the Bay Area. But yeah. still, they're not getting their offers accepted and they're pulling their hair out, Johnny, yeah. and they can't figure out why, but you have the answers of what the problem is. We do have the answers. And just so you're clear, or so we're clear, you don't have to be a cash offer to get a good deal on a home or to get your offer accepted. A lot of people are... are they feel like, hey, I'm getting beat out by Bay Area buyers, by cash offers, both here in California and in other states. Other states don't like the Californians because they're coming in with their cash offers and they're beating everybody else out in the market. But that's that's what's really happening is there's much more to getting your offer accepted than price. Yeah, that's the big misconception. That's the that's the thing that has people feel trapped and just like like they're at a loss. Like I can't afford any more money. Right. How do I get my offer accepted? Yeah. And so because it can be frustrating because I know a lot of families who went through that and they're just like they feel hopeless. They feel like they can't compete. Like yep. they're not in a position. Almost like you're a you're a college football player and you're you're playing against a NFL Hall of Famer. Yeah, you're and like you Rudy. Just, right. It's just like I I'm just I'm just an I'm just a you know, I, I work for, you know, I have a nine to five blue collar job and yeah. I would like to buy a house for my family. And yet how do I compete with these millionaires that come from the Bay area? That's yeah. how they feel. That's they feel exactly. like it's an unwinnable battle, but you're saying, no, that's not true. There's strategies and there's reasons why your offer is not being accepted. Correct. And so the the ways that we walk through, and we actually have this, um, uh, a PDF, like an ebook type of a thing. If you want to reach out, just go to madeformoreliving.com and we'll, we'll send it to you for free. Um, but what you want to do is the first thing you should be doing with a real estate agent is you should be sitting down and putting together, um, we call it a buyer battle plan. Oh, right? nice. I like so, that. So then that way you know, okay, what to expect, what we have to do. And that way the agent knows what it is you're looking for in a home. So that way when the right property pops up, you guys are the first ones in the door and you're the first ones writing the offers. And so what some strategies that we employ to get our offers accepted is first and foremost, like this is this is why working with a great agent is totally different than working with your friend or your family member who's been licensed forever but does one deal a year mm-hmm. or six deals a year. Twelve deals a year is, is not a lot. That's we work with people who we we're closing like just this week alone. We put we sold I think it was seven homes and we put four more in escrow just this week. And so we're con- so the reason why I'm saying this is who you work with matters because that person is going to have a reputation mm. and that reputation carries an incalculable amount of monetary value when you're going out there and you're writing off. Why is that? Because um, if you're representing a buyer, if you're working with a buyer's agent. That buyer's agent is going to have to negotiate on your behalf with the seller's agent, with the listing agent. And depending on that buyer's agent's reputation for, for professionalism, for getting the deal done, for, for adhering to contract deadlines and timelines, that's going to influence the listing agent's decision about whose offer they're going to pick. So if let's say there's only a $15,000 range between the highest and lowest offer across five offers, but but there's an agent that is known to be a professional and to get things mm. done and to and to have bright clean offers and to and to just their clients close like they have a strong pre approval letter they've gone they're they're already underwritten right like that 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 is a more for sure thing for that seller's client than the than the buyer's agent who is new who wrote a sloppy offer who nobody knows and they've closed one deal 
Mm. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So work with someone that's been successful, that has a reputation, yeah. that you know has a lot of connections with other realtors, Correct. and has a reputation of closing fast. Because absolutely, if you're selling your home, you want to work with people who you know are going to, um, the, the offers are going to go through. The financing is going to go through yeah. without any hiccups. And so when you have that reputation, uh, when you have that network, like you guys have it made for more living, Absolutely. um, then you're, then, then you're able, they want to work with you. They want, they want to sell their home to you guys. They want to, cause sellers, sellers, same as buyers, what they want more than anything, more than anything is certainty. That's the number one thing they're seeking yes. is they want to know if I begin this process with this person, is it going to go through? Will I get as much money as they're saying they're going to pay me? Are there going to be any surprises? Can they really afford the loan? They want the certainty. And the best conduit for that certainty is going to be your agent. And so that's why you really need to work with somebody who's experienced. And so it doesn't matter. Like This is, this is um, an extreme example, but it's 100% true. Valerie's offer, my wife, she's a real estate broker on the team. She got her offer accepted. And it was sixty thousand dollars less. Sixty six oh sixty thousand dollars less than the highest offer on the table. And and you're thinking, well, why why would they accept her offer? One, she's well known in the community. Two, her buyer was very well approved. And three, they didn't think the home would appraise for that much money. So the the inexperienced agent just threw out an offer and and kept the appraisal contingency in there and said, hey, you know what? The, it won't appraise, so then we'll renegotiate them down to a more realistic price. Mm. Valerie's client came in, waived the appraisal contingency. Right? This is, this is, this, and the That's home, experience. This, that is, this is strategies experience. Strategies that you have to know. These are strategies you have to know, and a good listing agent is going to recognize that as well. Right. And if, they, if they're not a good listing agent, a good buyer's agent is going to get on the phone and communicate that. Say, hey, here's our offer. Here's why it's structured. Here's why it's a benefit to your client. Right. They're gonna. Leave, they're not gonna leave anything up to chance. So if you're putting in those offers and you feel like it's the highest offer and you get frustrated, like, oh my goodness, how come they didn't accept our offer? Our offer was the highest. Maybe it's who you're working with. Maybe they don't understand fully the whole scope of the transaction of the process of what's going on, and you're left hanging there because you're not working with the right people. Yep. And they're. They're obviously not telling you everything you need to know. And so that's why you got to work with Johnny Jennings and his team at Made for More Living, right? Absolutely. And so if you're if yeah, if your offers aren't getting accepted, we can help with that. Right. Now, now if you've if you've if you're in a contractual agreement with an agent, we can't help you. But if you haven't signed anything, if you're not locked in or if you're just beginning the process, we're happy to help you with that. The other thing that you can do is look at the other components of the contract because it's not all about price. Look at the timelines. Like, does the seller want a long escrow? Do they want a fast escrow? How fast can you close it if they want a fast escrow? Are you working with a lender? Like, our lenders can close these things in eight, nine, ten days. And now the now that seller has the certainty. They have the cash in hand, and now but now they have a, a rent back for 30 days. Mm. So they still have the flexibility to get out of the home right. without being rushed. And so... There's the, there's, there's the price, there's the timelines, there's the agent, and there's also the contingencies. How long are the, have those contingencies been written for? Typical contingencies, contingencies include appraisal, loan, and um, inspection of the property. And so appraisal and loan are two different things. One, are they qualified for the loan? Uh, we were recently um, doing a, a deal with, uh, actually, uh, Barry. You, you know Barry. Sure. Bro- broker Barry. Barry Mathis. Barry Mathis, yeah. He was recently doing a deal, and the guy quit his job the day the loan was sup- the, the house was supposed to close. So when the lender called to do the employment verification before wiring the funds, they're like, that person doesn't work here anymore. Mm. You know? And so there's there's all these different aspects of the, of the transaction. So you really just want to make sure that who you're working with understands the different components so that way you're not also overpaying for a home because a lot of people will just throw money at it and then they end up buying the house and they overpaid for the house now they're they're stuck but they got the house but they could have paid less right yeah so those those are some different strategies that we employ to help make sure our clients offers are getting accepted like people have come to us and they've been unsuccessful you know 3 4 5 times and they come to us and we're like okay sit down go through our buyer plan 
our buyer battle plan, and then we're going to move forward with certainty and speed, and then we're able to get their offer accepted. So that's some hope. That's an encouragement for families that are listening that feel like, I just can't compete. It's just not right. It's not the right time for us to buy a home in California because yeah. there's so much competition from millionaires from the Bay Area, all these all-cash buyers, and... I, I just, I can't compete. That's, you know, maybe you've heard that in the news. Maybe you've heard that on social media, but Johnny Jennings made for more living is here to say that's not true. There is hope. There is right? hope. There is a, there is a solution. Yeah. You just have to work with the right people yeah. and who have the right information and the right strategies. Exactly. Right. And then that way you don't have to move to Texas. Right. You can stay <laughs> hey, local. You know what? That's interesting. We're going to talk about that. Is it worthwhile to move to Texas? Because a lot of people, they're thinking, oh, I just can't afford to live in California anymore. I don't like the, the financial situation. Uh, you have done some research, right? And I you have, have find yeah. out, you've compared numbers to numbers, apples to apples, and we're going to find out the truth. Is it financially worthwhile to move to Texas? Right? That's next. All right, real quick, and then we're going to get back to the show. If you're curious what kind of offers you would get on your home, or hey, maybe you want an all-cash offer, no matter what kind of condition your home is in, Johnny Jennings and the Tom Daves Real Estate team can help. Just go to TomDaves.com, type in your address, and bam, right away, you're going to get that info. Again, it's TomDaves.com, or give Johnny Jennings a call at 855-TOM-DAVES.